Hi, welcome to Group 12's final project demo. My name is Shivani and I'll be introducing you to our project called Modeling Credit Score. So first, a little background information. Credit scores are an important metric used by banks to evaluate how credit worthy an individual is. We wanted to see if banks could use data about their customers to estimate their credit scores. We decided to work off of Kaggle's bank loan status data set. From this data, we trained two regression models and two classification models to see how they comparatively performed in predicting a customer's credit score or credit score range. In the cleaning part, our main task is to deal with missing values, incorrect values, redundant features, feature transformation, and feature normalization. So our first step is to deal with missing values. We found that there are some completely empty rows and we just remove them from the data frame. And for the rest of the missing value, we deal with, a, with different techniques. For example, we just replace bankruptcy, one since less delinquent and tax lien with zero value because it's more aligned with the business situation, which means the person has no bad credit behavior. And for the one categorical columns, years in current job, we just fill the non-value with less than one year. And for the continuous value, we found out for the credit score, the value distribution is very abnormal with maximum score at 75, 110, with minimum score at 585. Then we just shrink those values larger than A50, 10 times smaller, and drop those rows with value less than A850. For categorical values, we found some abnormality in home ownership and purpose. So for home ownership, there are some duplicate values as home mortgage and half mortgage. For purpose, there are duplicate values as others, more business, and take a trip. And we just replace the values with the with home mortgage, other business loan, and vacation to reduce the counts of the unique features in the data set. Then for the data cleaning, we found out some redundant features because from original data frame, there are 88,865 customers, but the number of unique customer ID is only 72,344. After we take a look at the data frame, we just decided to drop all of those duplicate values. And for feature transformation, we transform these continuous columns into categorical columns because there are too many unique values and it's better to transform them into categorical columns with larger than 0 as 1 and equal 0 as 0 to reduce the dimensionality of the dataset. The next step, next feature transformation is to just shrink the units of months since last delinquent from 25 months as 2 years to also reduce the dimensionality of our dataset for further label encoding. And after that, we found our dataset is still very distributed, distributed unequally because annual income has very large value range, but for years in current job have relative, relatively slow value range. Then we need normalization to rescale our dataset. So the last step is to cut the credit score into different ranges. And we found that most of the value concentrated at the lower end. So we decided to resample, which is to oversample the minority attributes in our dataset to get our finally clean dataset ready for model, pre model processing and data exploration. Hi, my name is Dylan Long. I took part in the exploratory data analysis. Um, we did not find any major correlations between attributes and credit score, but we did find um, enough of a trend between data representations to gain some useful information about um, which attributes were making contributions. Um, we can see to the right, we have a, uh, a relative plot on top, which shows some correlation between uh, credit score and years of credit history with uh, more years of credit history corresponding to higher credit scores, which we would expect. And then below that we see um, in a scatter plot, the higher annual incomes corresponding to higher credit scores, which we would also expect. Of course, we don't see a strong correlation there, but it is still um, something to note, um, which was uh, consistent in multiple data representations. Um, 
and we found the um, most significant attributes to be annual income, purpose, years of credit history, number of open accounts, monthly debt, term, and loan status. Um, attributes such as annual income, years of credit history, monthly debt, um, intuitively, these uh, were expected to be um, correlated with credit score. Uh, thank you. In the modeling part, the first type of model we are building is regression model. In here, we choose to build a linear regression model and support factor regression model. The output for this type of model will be a actual number, which represents a credit score. The reason we choose to build a linear regression model is because we want to measure what extent there is a linear relationship between dependent variables and independent variables. The second type of regression model we are building is support factor regression model. Support factor algorithm is known for its kernel trick to handle long linear input spaces. As you can see here, we use RBF as our kernel function. It's because RBF can map an input space in infinite dimensional space. Therefore, it gives more explanation for data complexity than linear kernel function. The next type of model we are building is a classification model. In here, we choose to build logistic regression model and random forest classification model. The output for this type of model will be a credit score range instead of a single number. The reason we choose use logistic algorithm and random forest algorithm is because they both can learn a long linear decision boundary and thus they can achieve higher performance such as achieve higher accuracy score, precision score, and record score. And also bagging random sampling and picture selection of random forest address better for long linear data set. We evaluate our model's performance by applying appropriate metrics. The metrics will report whether our models can make correct predictions on generalized data. Using the metrics for each model as a performance score, we can compare different models to identify which of the models perform the best. We'll first compare the two regression models, linear regression and support vector regression. To compare these models, we will use mean squared error or MSE. Starting off with linear regression, the training and testing set errors are both about 2.1%. Moving on to support vector regression, we see that the training and testing set errors are slightly lower than linear regression coming in at about 2%. Because of the slight difference, we can declare ve support vector regression as the winner for the regression models. Let's now take a look at the classification models. The metric we use for these models is F1 score because it provides a nice balance between precision and recall. The logistic model only scored a 0.17 for the training set and 0.3 for the testing set. The random forest model reached an F1 score of one for the training set and a 0.45 for the testing set. It is clear that the random forest model is the winner for the classification models. Now that we have decided on winners for each model category, it's time to choose an overall winning model that performs the best for our use case. This poses a little problem because comparing regression and classification models isn't a straightforward process. We can't simply use the metric values to decide the winners like we just did because the metrics are different. So in order to choose between support vector regression and the random forest model, we need to decide which model provides the more useful information about our data. With support vector regression, we are able to model nonlinear relationships in the data set by using a nonlinear kernel, which is important because our data set has shown nonlinear trends. But on the other hand, the output for the random forest class classification is more interpretable as it provides us with a range of credit scores rather than just a single score. For this reason, we'll have to give the overall win to the random forest model. The first challenge we faced was dealing with the imbalanced data. This is the distribution of credit score range. The majority data comes from range number six to range number nine. Range number zero to range number three have much less sample size than other range. So we can tell that this data is imbalanced. 
You can imagine that when we train a model, we pass the training set into the model so that the model can learn from the training set. Since the data is in balance, it's very likely to produce a biased model. This is the result from this imbalanced data set. So range number zero to range number four are getting all zeros and the overall accuracy was only 40%. So the model never learned from the minority data, which means when we want to make a prediction using other data, we can never predict the range number zero to range number four. The solution for imbalanced data set is over sampling. In here, before we pass the training set into the model, we over sample all ranges in the training set so that all range have the same amount of sample size so that we can prevent a model learn from only the majority data. This is the result after apply over sampling technique. Compare previous model, this model from range zero to range number four is getting higher accuracy than the previous model and the over accuracy score has also increased. The software engineering team ran into a few challenges while creating the web application for our project. We had some trouble integrating the machine learning models into our backend. Some of us had never used the Flask micro framework before, and so there was a slight learning curve. When attempting to initialize the shell for Flask, the pipe ENV and virtual ENV modules needed to be reinstalled a few times before it ran properly. And for those of us who worked on Windows, while attempting to compile and run the backend on Visual Studio Code, there was an error with the installed NumPy module, despite it being up to date. Finally, when we compared the calculated credit scores from Flask with that of the models on Jupyter Notebook, the results differed slightly, although we feel that is due to differences in the two environments. We developed our web application using the React and Python Flask. Where React is used for the front end and Flask is used for designing the back end of our web app. In our front end, we displayed a forum which lets user enter desired data to predict credit score. When user clicks the button to calculate the credit score, the data gets sent to the back end in JSON format. On our Backend, we use Pickle module to create a model for linear regression, sport vector regression, logistic regression, and random forest classifier. We then display a credit score from each model to compare and contrast the results in the front end. Now for a demo. So here is the demo of the web application. All we have to do is fill out this form with our information and we should get our, our predicted credit scores for each model. So let's say our current loan amount is about 10,000 and we're making about 100,000 each year. We are working eight years in a current job. And we have a monthly debt of, let's say 2,500. We have about 10 years of credit history. Our last delinquent was probably, let's just say 30. Let's say we have six open accounts. Current credit balance is, let's say 20,000. And let's say our maximum over credit is uh, 25,000. For the term, let's say it's short. We don't have any credit problems. We had had one bankruptcy. And let's just say we have no tax limits as well. For home ownership, let's say we're running. And for the purpose, let's say we gotta buy a house. And for our loan status, let's say it's fully paid off. We click the calculate score button and we should get our respective scores for each model right here. And yeah, that's all there is to it. So in summary, our regression models performed comparatively well. Our random forest model outperformed our logistic model and was our best model with an accuracy of 0.48 and an F1 score of 0.45. We could further develop our project by looking into some other ML algorithms and fine tuning how we oversample our data set. Finally, our business recommendation is that data about their customers can be leveraged to predict credit scores as we demonstrated.